to the land fair and bright, where the loved ones now wait, mid the scenes of delight. 2024 marks the 40th anniversary of Patuxent Music. In four decades, I've had the privilege to produce and record scores of brilliant musicians. You're about to see a lot of film clips and stills from the various artists we've recorded over the years. And you'll see the evolution of the studio from two-track analog to multi-track digital workstation. We're still going and we hope to do another video for the 50th. I hope you enjoy this. Well, that may have been it on that one. Where'd you go? Where ain't nobody? I 
making a boom boom sound. East of the sun and west of the moon. Oh, 
it's good, right? singing that one line up uh, well if that's true you're singing well if that's true <laughs> well you can't wait to hear that all right you still have me falling that's apart I forgot to play the... Is that... Where is this? F to F sharp. 
Oh, that's my line. It gets to, you're playing the melody in the bridge there. Oh. Oh, so that's the bridge there? Yeah. Okay, that makes sense.
kicked the show off for me in 1954, Bill Hardeman at Bean Blossom when he'd done his country shows. And Bill didn't make so men Red took his place. We kicked the show off for him. All right, guys, you ready for another one? No, but we are. You want to hear the tempo of the other one? No, we're going to do this about the same. Okay, you ready? No, but we are. You're rolling. One, two, three, go. lay down my two pieces of a solo on this great tune Corey wrote. It's great. It's going to be a great record. I'm really looking forward to it. Has your part passed yet? Yeah. Yes. There was, there was two things actually. There was one right at the very beginning. And then the uh, harmony? Yeah. Um, the, the harmony at the end is what I need to recut. Not the whole thing. Probably. Um, I'm feeling fantastic right now because I got freaking Jake Starzl, Mark Schatz, and Brian McDowell in the studio with me right now, and it is making me very happy. A good. very happy young man. Good. <laughs> Tom, how do you feel about it? Hurry up and get this over with so I can go nah. fishing. <laughs> <laughs>
look down that lonesome road and hang your head and cry for we often lose some things in life. restaurant so he takes us to this place and I I should have been suspicious when I walked in the door because there's this huge aquarium type fish tank there you know by the cash <laughs> register I didn't really I just thought it was like a display of you know like some people have aquariums you know what I mean there's several fish in there floating somewhere swimming around you know so anyway we go back and they and uh, and they bring us menus and put them in front of us and they're all in chicken tracks nobody can read Japanese right and there's no English translation so uh uh, so uh, Robert uh, realizes that we can't read, you know, the menu. So he, oh, I order special for you, <laughs> a very special dinner. That those fish that were swimming in the in the tank, they took one of those fish, scaled it. You know, they had real small scales on them. They scaled the fish first out in the kitchen, and sliced off the uh, uh, the whole side of the fish. Turned it over, sliced off the whole other side, and then diced it in, into small cubes. And so now the fish is laying on the board <laughs> flat. With you know, with the head sticking up toward the ceiling, and all the, all the uh, little cubes are laying on the side. Of this, one all, from both sides are all laying on the side of the carcass, right? And they give you chopsticks and some some uh, soy sauce to dip it in, you know. And meanwhile, uh, you know, you got you, you got to try to imagine us. I would pay at least a thousand dollars for a, a video of this dinner. Oh God! If, you know, yeah. to, to, to see the look on. Herschel's and Dell's and Jerry's faces, you know, yeah. it was incredible. Yeah. And anyway, uh, so they, they set they set one down in front of each of us, and, they, and now you got to realize the fish are still alive. They didn't gut it or kill it. It's it, the guy, eyeballs are rolling around like this. You know? <laughs> Can we hear the last take? Let's hear that one. Red followed me down there, <laughs> and and uh, actually, 
what happened was, I ain't going to tell you why he moved down there. Uh, he might not want anybody to know about it. But uh, then he came down and we started playing and we got Tom Morgan, he started playing bass with us. Uh, you came out and did a demo recording out at uh, my recording studio. And at that time, you had uh, Robbie Robinson oh, playing, yeah. playing banjo with you. But uh, he was from Columbus area, wasn't he? Oh yeah, that's when we got a tape from you. I took it to New York, Red went with me to sell to Folkway Records. Mm, okay. Then after we uh, did that, I chose all them songs and you, you recorded them all. This man to my left had the challenging task to go in there cold turkey and follow with something creative and coherent after Frank had got through ringing out the mandolin <laughs> on every break. <laughs> extreme to the other just I said here I am hell Billy you know North Alabama boy never thought he'd ever get to do anything on this grand yeah, scale
I'm Tom Menti. I'm Mason Vi. We're going to do you a little sample of the title track from our new Patuxent album, Looking for the Stone. I'm looking for the stone that was out of my heart. I'm looking for the stone that was rolling out the bathroom. I'm looking for the stone that was out of my heart. It's tearing out a kingdom of this world. Oh, tearing out a kingdom of this world.
occasion, the record was the 40th anniversary of a one my of a one-man show I put together called Banjo Dancing, or the 48th annual Squitters Mountain Song Dance Folklore Convention and Banjo Contest, and how I lost. Thank you. 